Do me a favor. What? Could you arrange for us to meet the way you did before? Well, uh... You seem hesitant. David is a very disturbed boy. If I seem hesitant, it's because I don't want to do anything that might disturb him more. I see. Will you excuse me? Yes. Yes, of course. Vicky. Oh, come in, come in. I hope I'm not disturbing you. Are you busy? No, no, no. I'm not, uh, never too busy for you. And take your coat. Thank you. Well, what do you have in mind? I, I had to talk to somebody, Burke. What about? I suppose it's very fool. Isn't this Mrs. Collins? It was taken a long time ago. She's very beautiful. Yes. You knew her quite well, didn't you? I was in love with her. What happened? She married Roger. I'm sorry. Never mind about that. You didn't come up here to discuss my past history. Actually, I did. What? Burke, I have to talk to somebody about Mrs. Collins. What about her? You're probably going to think I'm out of my mind. But I don't trust her. What makes you say that? Well, she lied to me once, and I don't understand why. What did she lie about? A locket. <laughs> A locket? Yes, she showed me an old locket once. It was an heirloom that Roger had given to her. Several days later, one just like it turned up. It had been found in her apartment in Phoenix after the fire. Well, she denied that she ever had the first one, but I know she did because I saw it with my own eyes. Well, why would she lie about it? I don't know. Why do I have these doubts about Mrs. Collins? I want to like her for David's sake. I'd like to think that She's everything she seems to be. So do I. Tell me something, Vicky. What? What's with Roger? How does he behave around her? What do you mean? Well, is he afraid or on edge? Not at all. Are you sure? Yes. He wants his wife and David to become close again. But aside from that, he and Mrs. Collins get along very well. That's interesting. Excuse me. Yes? Burke, it's Laura. I know. I have to see you. Are you alone? No. Well, can we meet somewhere? Where? Remember the place we used to meet on the pier? I remember. Well, go there in an hour. I'll be waiting for you. All right. I don't know why I have these feelings about Mrs. Collins. I guess it doesn't make too much sense. I have a few unanswered questions myself. Ones I intend to get the answers to. You're early. 
I was always an impatient man. I remember. What do you want? I need your help. With what? David. What can I do to help David? Well, for some reason, he... he seems frightened of me. I can't get him to believe in my love or to respond to it. I need him desperately. How do I enter in? I know how much he admires you. He talks about you constantly. Does he? Yes. In fact, you seem to mean more to him than his own father. Maybe there's a reason for that. It could be. Would you care to spell that out? I would rather leave certain things unsaid right now. All right, Laura. What do you want me to do, talk to the boy? Yes. I know you have enormous influence over him. He'll listen to you. Well, what if I do everything that you want me to do? What do I get out of it? You get what you want, and so do I. You get David. What do I get? Satisfaction. Why don't you come out and say what you mean, Laura? Are you promising to testify for me at a retrial? Yes, of course I am. Well, if there is a retrial, you could be implicated. I don't care. Why not? Well, because I've lived with my guilt for too many years, and Roger deserves to be punished. In other words, you hate Roger. Don't I have enough reason? I heard you're not behaving as if you hate him. I've heard you've been very friendly with him. Who told you that? By someone who's had a chance to observe you and Roger at close range, Vicki Winters. Why were you and Vicky discussing me? Never mind about that. What's between you and Roger? We're civil to each other. I have to be civil to him. Because it's the only way I'll ever persuade him to let me have David. Can I trust you? Well, that's a question you're going to have to answer for yourself. I have memories, Laura. Bitter memories. So do I. But they're not all bitter. Surely the same must be true for you. Yes. This place brings back memories. I remember other nights when I met you here. I remember standing right here, looking out into the fog seeing only the flickering lights of, of ships passing in the darkness. And it was as if, as if we existed together in a universe that no one else could inhabit. You're very beautiful. You're very flattering. It's odd about you, Laura. What is? I should hate you. I should be bitter. I should mistrust every word you say. Do you? No. I'm glad you don't. When we're together, the oddest things happen to me. What happens? Everything seems to melt away. All my anger, my needs, my drives. It's as if they didn't exist anymore, except in some far off place. And there's only one thing with reality. What? You. Are you sure? The Arizona authorities are sure. But if this is what they're thinking, why didn't they contact you? After all, you're with the state police. Why should they? 
But if they suspect that... Ah, they don't suspect. At least the phraseology that are reports hasn't arrived yet at that particular word. Well, then what do you mean? That they're onto something and they don't want to go into it right away? Look, exactly what did they say? They said that in the death of the woman they identified as Laura Collins, there's a possibility, an outside possibility, that she was murdered. Murdered? That's a far out possibility, but it is a possibility. The Arizona police have a dead body on their hands. So far, the events leading up to the cause of death haven't been determined. Well, don't they just assume the cause of death to be uh, asphyxiation? Well, that's a logical assumption. But it's just possible that the woman who died might have been incapacitated in some way before the fire started. Does that seem likely? She died behind locked doors. She made no apparent effort to escape. That could be a reason for a murder theory. Well, I'm glad to hear you use the word theory, Lieutenant. Yes, of course it's a theory. So far, and considering the circumstances of the death, I'm sure that there are many theories being investigated. Look, couldn't this woman have been overcome by smoke before she could reach the door? Yeah, it's a possibility. Oh, it's more than a possibility. It's the most logical explanation. Maybe. Lieutenant, allow me to remind you that a murder charge requires proof of motive and proof of opportunity. You don't have to remind me of anything. No charge has been filed. But you are considering the possibility of murder. The Arizona police are considering it. Why? Have they established a motive for murder? No. <laughs> it's absurd. They don't even know the identity of the victim, much less her relationship with Laura Collins. Well, they do know that Laura Collins has a history of mental disturbance. That suggests a woman capable of violence. Oh, oh it seems to me you're reaching pretty far. Well, I'd be inclined to agree with you. If it weren't for two facts that we have to face. Two facts we find very puzzling. What are they? One is that we've traced the source of the fire to Laura Collins' apartment. Oh, how did it start? Started in the kitchen. They think that gas from the stove ignited and set off the rest of the room. That could have been an accident? Yeah, could have been. All right, what's your other fact? Laura Collins claims she left Phoenix five days before the fire, right? Right. We've tried to run down that story. We've checked out the airlines, the bus lines. We haven't been able to find one witness who remembers it. All right, what's so unusual about that? I mean, thousands of people travel by rail and bus every day. It, it would be easy for a lone woman to go unnoticed. I'd be inclined to agree with that if we hadn't come up with a witness. A witness who tells a completely different story. What is it? As a woman who lives in Laura Collins' apartment building in Phoenix, she claims she saw Laura Collins on the day of the fire. Vicky, come in. Glad you could stop by. Well, it would have caused a disaster. If you come up to Collinwood. Yeah. Here, let me take your coat. Thank you. I was making a pot of coffee. Would you uh, care for a cup? I'd love one. Come on in the kitchen. Well, what's this important thing you want to see me about? Well, after you left yesterday, I became a little concerned about your attitude toward Laura. Oh? I've been giving it a good deal of thought. And you can take my word for it, Vicki. Laura Collins is a remarkable woman. You have nothing to fear. There's nothing to be mistrusted about her. I don't understand you at all. Is it so unusual for a, for a man to admit that he was wrong? No, but yesterday you said the exact opposite. Well, yesterday I went a little overboard. I've been thinking it over, and I realized I, well, I was, I was a little, little harsh with her, unfair. Well, I'm a little confused. Why? Because yesterday you, you said she was strange, and, and today... Well, today you're talking about Laura Collins as if she's the perfect woman. Laura is a troubled and lonely woman. And anything anyone can do to make life easier for her, it should be done. What made you change your mind? I told you. I thought it over. You're the one person who can help her, Vicky. Me? I'm the last one in the world. It's up to Mrs. Stoddard and, 
And Roger, whether she'll be allowed to take David away with her or not. And Laura won't be able to do that unless David's willing to go along with it. Elizabeth's rule, right? Yes, but I can't make up David's mind for him. You know David? <laughs> yes, I know him. I've become very fond of him. So have I. I know. And we both want to do what's right for him. And what's right for David is his mother. Yes. Is that what you're saying? Yes. And you, you can bring them together. David should know what a warm and, and wonderful mother she is. Burke, I don't like to bring this up, but I... What? Yesterday, you told me how you used to feel about Laura before she married Roger. I'm not ashamed of that. Neither is she. We loved each other. But she married Roger. That was quite a shock to you, wasn't it? Yes. You couldn't believe that she, she could do such a thing, could you? Are you suggesting that she couldn't be trusted then and shouldn't be trusted now? No, of course not. I know that people change. Well? I'm not talking about Laura Collins. I'm talking about you. Because of the way you used to feel about her, you couldn't see her clearly. Perhaps that's true now. No. No, it's not. I have no doubts. No doubts about Laura, about her sincerity or about her love for David. Are you sure that you know her so well? I mean the woman she is now. I know her. I know her better than anyone else in this world. Then you will do what you can to help Laura. I'll do what I can to help David. You're hedging. Can't help it. Laura's changed. She's changed. She's not what she was before. I'm not concerned with what she was before. I'm concerned with what she is now. And what is she now? I don't know. I don't understand her. Well, if you don't understand her and you're so uncertain about her, don't you think you shouldn't make any judgments about her? I'm not making judgments. Not helping her is the same as making a judgment. Can't I be allowed a little confusion? What reason have you to be confused? That's just what I've been telling you. Because you don't give me any reason except your own feelings, which seem to change from day to day. Can't a guy change his mind? But why did you change your mind? I thought it over. I decided I was wrong. You only thought it over. Becky, drop it. I'm sorry. So am I. Listen to what I have to say. You have a lot of reason not to mistrust me, but trust me about Laura. Or at least try. All right. I have to go now. You don't look very convinced. Can't help the way I look. Goodbye.